everybody, you're here with Alyssa and Caroline. Today we're going to be doing a special edition of the Johnson Art Beat podcast. It's going to be the first in a series of monthly podcasts that are going to involve the student docents here. We're going to focus on one piece in the collection that's going to be on display. Today we're actually in the ancient and medieval art gallery here. So we're going to take a look at this specific work and have our student docent give you a lot of information about it. So we are here with one of our student docents, Corinna. Hi, Corinna. Welcome. Hi. Hi, it's great to be here. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what you study here at Cornell. Well, I'm actually a first year grad student in the Medieval Studies program, and I study history, mainly 10th and 11th century northern France, I guess some 12th century too. I guess you have something to talk about today in this particular collection. Do you want to take it away? Sure. Um, I'm actually hoping to introduce the two 15th century manuscripts that the Johnson Museum currently has on display. The first is by an unidentified French artist believed to have been close to the rather famous other French artist, Jean Fouquet. And the second is one folio from a manuscript also by an anonymous French artist. The text of the page on display in the first manuscript is in Old French, while the text of the second manuscript is in Latin, but actually both have sections that are in Latin. Um, so these two works are examples of late medieval books of hours. Books of hours became common in the late 13th century as an aspect of the growing importance of lay devotion. In other words, books of hours helped facilitate prayer and religious thought for people who were not trained members of the Christian church. They were also generally very highly prized by those who owned them, and many included calendars, so they also sometimes have personal and family annotations in the calendars. The two works in the Johnson Museum's collection in particular are of very high quality, and therefore were likely produced for people who are well-educated and wealthy. Still, the fact that almost every page has an image reminds us that books of ours were originally intended to facilitate personal devotion for people who were not necessarily well-versed in Latin, which is the language of the church. The use of Old French also underlines this. Books of ours were often also produced for women, many of whom would have been literate, at least in the most basic sense, and the rise in the use of books of ours coincides with the rise in female devotion generally in society. Books of ours are also generally small, as they're meant to be portable, and therefore could provide a guide to prayer and meditation throughout the day. The books hold the offices of the hours, which are prayers that should be said at specific points throughout the day, but they also contain other passages from the Bible and, as I said, a liturgical calendar. These parts of the books could be quite personal to the owner in that they can include passages that the, that the, um, the owner just particularly would like and asked the, the creator to include. And since most of these books were commissioned, um, each book has a personality of its own. Also, the texts commonly included in these books vary by region. The production of these books could take many shapes. Often they were owned by members of the merchant class who would order them from booksellers. These booksellers, in turn, would often farm out the production of different parts of the books to different scribes and illuminators. Thus, in one book, it is common to find the work of many different people. The text of the old French manuscript on display in the Johnson Museum's collection is beautifully executed, and the images are as well. The page currently on view at the Johnson Museum is the Angel Gabriel's Annunciation to Mary. We see Mary, who is in the process of finding out that she will give birth to Christ, on the right and Gabriel, who is the angel sent to tell her the good news, is on the left. The dove, which signifies the Holy Spirit, unites them from its placement above and between them. Even without reading the words, it would be possible to meditate on, understand, and enjoy this image. The fact that some text in this manuscript is in Old French suggests that this book may have been made for someone who is not fluent in Latin, making the images all the more important. Still. This work is also significant for likely having been produced by someone in the workshop in Tours of the French artist Jean Fouquet. He is generally considered one of the most important artists in France in the 15th century. His work shows the influence of the Italian Renaissance, and he is thought to have traveled to Italy to learn Italian techniques. Fouquet produced illuminations for the most powerful people in France, most notably the king, Charles VII. Scholars have argued in the past that Fouquet's influence caused other French artists to adopt Italian techniques, as can be seen in this page in the beautiful folds of Mary's gown. The page from the other Book of Hours in the Johnson Museum's collection is in Latin. For many people, a Book of Hours may have been the only book that they owned, and this particular book is far from pedestrian. The Johnson Museum displays a single folio, which at some point was removed from the original book, showing the Annunciation of the Shepherds. This is the moment after Christ was born, when an angel informed the shepherds watching their flocks before anyone else in the world that the Messiah had come. 
The artist has placed humans very much at the center of this image, with a smaller angel floating above the shepherds in the foreground. A similar relation to contemporary life appears in the other book of ours, in the house in which Mary is sitting. The wood paneling looks suspiciously like a late medieval French or Italian home, rather than one that may have been in the Holy Land in the first century BC. This focus on people and a world that would have been recognizable to the book's owners makes sense for a book of ours, as its owners would most likely be very much part of the secular and earthly world. Part of the books of ours' purpose is to bring a sense of sacredness into that world. Both of these works also feature a fair amount of either empty space or decorated space. The old French work has a large amount of blank space around the text, a traditional symbol of luxury, indicating the ability to waste materials. The Latin work also includes space outside of the images and text, but it is filled with intricate floral designs. These designs add to the earthly quality of the text, as well as adding to the elegance of the book. The Latin work also includes some floral decorations around the image. The writing in both of these works is in Gothic book scripts. In the 15th century, these works were not printed with a word processor or typewriter, and not even with a printing press. The text in these works, like the images, was produced by highly skilled artisans by hand. The Gothic styles of script have been analyzed by many scholars and divided into complex categories and hierarchies. But suffice to say for these two works that their scripts are of relatively formal quality. This hierarchy of scripts is a way of demonstrating the importance of a work, and both of these works, judging by nothing other than their scripts, would have been highly valued. We have seen that both text and image work together in these books to tell the stories, facilitate prayers, and show us how valuable the works were. The images, of course, can in some ways function like a text. Even if we can't read Latin or Old French, if we know some of the important stories from the Bible, the images of the open leaves are recognizable. The text also functions both as a verbal and visual signifier. The words themselves allow those who are literate to understand the prayers and to fully appreciate the work. The ways in which they were produced, however, tell us something about how highly the work was valued. Even if we can't understand what is written, the elegant script in which it is done shows us that what we are looking at is important. It is the interplay of both text and image that allows us to come to the best understanding of how these works were used and why they were produced. So that was really informative. I really didn't know a lot about that, um, especially how these were designed mainly for women. I had no idea, so that was really cool. So what drew you exactly to this piece? Well, I guess being a medievalist, I was naturally drawn to this gallery. And being a historian, I'm sort of I'm particularly interested in text. So I was drawn to the books of ours because I was interested in this interaction between text and image. Well, thank you for coming today, Corinna. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, if you, if any of you listeners out there are curious about what these works look like in person, you can come to the Johnson. Uh, these works are located on the first floor in the ancient and medieval art galleries.